let's start with the new chapter known as definite integration before going into that let us recall the definition of indefinite integration or simply integration suppose y equal to f of x or say f of x be a function such that derivative of g of x with respect to x is f of x you are given a function f of x you are finding a function g of x such that derivative of g of x is f of x then we know that this g of x is called integral of f of x with respect to x and that we denote by integral f of x dx is equal to g of x plus c constant of integration so this is the definition of indefinite integration now what we do is let us take function f of x which is continuous on the closed interval ab so f of x is basically taken continuous on closed interval ab such that derivative of g of x is what f of x then definite integral of this f of x over the interval ab we denote this by integral f of x dx from a to b and is defined to be g of x plus c around this make a close bracket and write over here a and here what b these are the values of x so interval ab is nothing but the domain of the function f of x so this x is moving from what a to b so f of x we are integrating over the interval what ab and that is defined to be g of x plus c from a to b now let us define this as g of b plus c i am replacing x by b here b is called the upper limit and a is called lower limit of this integration so a and b are respectively lower and upper limits of this integration so i am replacing this x by what b that is g of b plus c so i am finding the value of this function g of x plus c at b minus i am finding now the value of the same function g of x plus c at what a so that is g of a plus c and i am taking what the subtraction of these two values here we see that the constant of integration gets eliminated by cancellation and i get g of b some fixed number minus g of a some other fixed number so this difference is defined to be the definite integral a to b f of x dx so definite integral this name has come because the indefiniteness of this c is gone that is c is getting eliminated in this process and whatever value we are getting is definite hence this integration is called what the definite integration so integral a to b f of x dx where f of x is continuous function on the closed interval ab is defined to be whatever is the integration of g of x without c we replace x by b and by a that is upper limit and lower limit and we write difference of the values of the function g at b and a that is defined as the definite integral of f of x for example suppose if i consider integral of sin x dx from what say 0 to pi by 2 so we know that sin x function is continuous on the closed interval 0 to pi by 2 hence let us evaluate this we know that integral of sin x is what minus cos x now we'll, we will not write c over here because in the process the constant of integration gets eliminated so just we write minus cos x and put around this a bracket right here the lower limit right here the upper limit so final answer is always 
upper limit minus lower limit. Let us pull this minus sign out inside the bracket. I am going to replace x by pi by 2. So, I get cos pi by 2 minus I am going to replace x by what? 0. So, this is what? Cos 0. So, cos pi by 2 is known to be 0 and cos 0 is known to be what? 1. Hence, minus in a bracket 0 minus 1 which is plus 1. So, 1 is the value of this integration. So, 1 is a fixed number. So, this is a definite integral value. So, integral 0 to pi by 2 sin x dx is equal to what? 1. Now, one more condition is that what does this definite integration represent geometrically? Geometrically, integral a to b f of x dx represents the area under the curve y equal to f of x which is bounded by y equal to f of x and the ordinates at x equal to a and ordinate at x equal to b and the x axis. That is suppose this is the curve y equal to f of x and from the end points if I drop the perpendiculars on x axis at say a and b. So, in this interval you see that the function is continuous. This is this height is what ordinate at x equal to a. This height is what ordinate at x equal to b. So, this area which is enclosed by the curve ordinates at x equal to a ordinate at x equal to b and the x axis itself. So, this area is nothing but integral a to b f of x dx. So, if I denote this area by capital A, then this area A is given by integral a to b y dx or integral a to b f of x dx. So, y is equal to f of x. So, f of x can be uh, replaced by what? y also. So, a is means area under this curve is integral a to b f of x dx. So, geometrically definite integration represents area under the curve. So, y equal to f of x is that curve which is defined over the interval a b. So, integral a to b f of x dx is nothing but that area under the curve. Suppose for example, <coughs> here I have shown you one example. 0 to pi by 2 sin x dx is equal to 1. So, we know the graph of sin x. The graph of sin x is something like this. This is passing through the origin and this is the graph from 0 to pi. Pi by 2 is over here. So, if I consider this much portion of the graph of sin x, this is y equal to sin x defined from 0 to pi by 2 whose definite integration value is how much 1. So, this area given by this definite integration from 0 to pi, pi by 2 sin x dx is how much 1. So, this area A is nothing but what 1. So, basically this definite integration is nothing but what area under the curve. If you are getting this number negative then we can put modulus sign and we will get the positive area of that. <coughs> uh, that part or that kind of discussion we will <coughs> discuss in the next lecture. So, 0 to pi by 2 sin x dx is equal to what? 1 represents the area shown as shown in what? The shield figure. Now, let us